This is a very moving experience for me to be uh, in this beautiful Goldmark Gallery uh, looking at Francis Davison's work because I knew him very well uh, towards the end of his life before he died of cancer and uh, uh, I looked at all his work he wanted me to see everything he'd done as he, when he knew he was dying and he used to go down at weekends and uh, he'd say is this any good and if I, if I if I didn't nod, he tended to tear it up, <laughs> so or burn it. So it was a it was a difficult time. I saw uh, the whole beginning of his work right the way through, uh, and he only wanted the best surviving. This is a very early work by Francis. He began uh, doing little paintings like this of the places that he were around where they lived in Silam, this little village in in. Uh, Suffolk, and it's obviously a house, and it could be a road, the door, and fields, and uh, brown fields, plough fields, and there's sort of a, uh, a uh, smoke, and uh, perhaps from the chimney, and a chimney, you know, but he's just beginning to develop his abstract language, uh, which is uh, it's not an obvious intellectual thing, it's an emotional uh, response to shape and colour, and it's very, very simple. And also what it's about is about creating a complete image that sings to you, that speaks to you. It's very complete. It just says, pow, I'm here, you know, this, this rectangle of paint. And it's something to do with this white and the white. It's not smoke anymore. It's just this rhythm. It's the same rhythm we've seen in, that we see in other paintings of his. And this angle there, the block there, and that particular green and that door. It's just a language of rhythm, movement, colour, shape and completeness. And if you go from here and have a look at here, you'll see the same, just the same rhythms in, these, in the rhythms of the arms and in the whole, this movement here. He used to tear with tremendous precision and then he would cut and he knew exactly what he was doing. They're very complex, but if you, if you, move, if you move that, leave that out, it changes it. If you leave that little mark out or you leave these little bits of paper where he's torn it off, you, you, it just doesn't work. They all, everything has to be here. He had a beautiful sense of tone. What he knew was that colours uh, uh, work together if their degree of light and shade work together. And they, uh, they sing in relation to that. And then they begin to create spaces. So you begin to see things behind and in front. The whole thing becomes a sort of dance, a dance purely of colour and, and shape and light and dark. As his work, uh, as, he, as he developed this private language, working in this little room, uh, with these bits of paper, his work became freer and freer. And he's, he's tearing with greater assuredness, he cuts and tears. These, this, this block here is made with two pieces of paper. Uh, this is a block there, another block, a block there, a block, a block. And so and this is edged one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Look, tear, tear, cut, cut, tear, 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 tear. And he builds it up. So within this sort of apparent, total throwaway sort of... Uh, uh, discarded, just scraps, he creates this beautiful dance. And there you see, look at that tiny little note of blue. Look at it, just perfect. Uh, this chocolate sort of colour there, the warmth. And that, that blue there makes the whole thing glow when you see it. Suddenly the picture gets this sort of resonance. How he does this, it's a magical thing. It's a magic out of nothing. He creates very, very beautiful things that just stay in your mind. And every time you look at them, you get this sort of lift, you see.